We're finally getting here to the Roseland Ballroom. It's in the tantrums. Driving from Providence, tires blew out on our trailer, so we we're stuck in the middle of the highway all night long with burning rubber. Smoke filling up into the uh, bus freaked us all out. We're like four hours late to sound check. Where there's a will, there's a way. So hopefully the bus will be arriving soon and then we can get the show started. Oh, is this us? This is possibly the bus arriving now. Don't miss this, this is incredibly exhilarating footage. New York City. It's always a little more complicated to do anything in New York City. I made a bet with the bus driver. I said, I bet if I get out at uh, 60th and uh, 2nd Avenue, I can beat you guys here just walking. And I won the bet. I won. <laughs> I won. I should have put money on that. Race with the bus. Yeah, and I won. So Let's go inside the venue and check out where we're at. With Loading. The famous Roseland Ballroom. Unfortunately, the Roseland is closing in April, so this will be one of the last shows that's ever done at the world famous Roseland Ballroom. Come on inside. Let the show begin. So when I come into any city, I like to sort of just survey the land, walk around the club, get a sense of the vibe. Hi. 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 It says Fuse is following us around all day today, Noel. Playing in New York, you get to play some just amazing old, old spaces that just have so much history inside of them. Everybody's played here at the Roseland. So for us, Fits in the Tantrums to be somewhere along that timeline, you know, uh, to be uh, placed in that marker of history, it's pretty incredible. So the equipment has arrived. <laughs> She wants to know, does she look like Christmas? I don't know if Christmas has a rockin' body and, uh, and a fox on its chest, sure. I'm just, you know, it's knit and it's red. Well, it does have a very Christmas sweater vibe to it. Great. All right, I'm grabbing my All right, all right. I'm gonna sit in the front. Yeah, it can get hectic, you know, it's like, this is just the first week, and we call this week Hell Week. <laughs> this is Hell Week. You, you start to get the itch a little bit. You know, I've talked to other touring musician friends of mine, and they have the same itch. You know, it's you're home for too long, and things start to get a little bit lazy. But this guy had a baby. The cutest thing on the planet. This guy right here. That's him an hour old. He's officially five weeks old today. Theodore Ignatius Fitzpatrick. We wanted to give him as many letters and syllables as possible. as possible so he would always be good at spelling. He smiled for the first time. And it's definitely sad not to be there for it. It's, it's different. Being on the road, it's an amazing journey. You know, you're literally in a different city every day and it can be uh, really exciting and then sometimes it's just a, Grind. God, I love this city. Even with all of the noise, things we try to block out, I love this city. When we were writing the record, what we realized sort of once we were at the like maybe three quarter mark and we had a little bit of perspective, we were like, oh right, we're writing these songs with our audience in mind, you know, because we're known to put on this crazy high energy show. We're always asking our audience to participate. We started from the Getty being the party band, really 
taking people in and, and like almost in a way kind of making fun of them when they're being the wallflower or they're trying to be the tough guy. We just crack that shell and I think, you know, for both Fitz and myself, when we are able to do that, that's what gets me hype. You know, it's like, oh, okay, I was able to get this like big burly dude to just start dancing for a minute and he has zero rhythm whatsoever and he doesn't care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. We have those moments, and, and, and that's what gets me gassed up. It's, it's, it's pretty cool, and I love doing that with a New York crowd. The minute you grab a London crowd, you can grab an L.A. crowd, you can grab a New York crowd, you're going to run the world. That's how that works. That's how I test myself as a performer, is, is getting you guys to dance. We're going to walk from here because cool. otherwise we're going to be even later. There's so many layers to music, man. I don't even think people realize it, you know, half the time. It's like, this is not just fun for us. It's not just like a hobby. Like we have to make a living like everyone else, you know? So we'll go through conversations about people, you know, like whether or not the whole technology game and, you know, the, the free streaming is a, is a plus or a minus sometimes. And it just depends on how you look at it. There's a double-edged sword in everything. The fact that your music gets out into the world in a very quick way, is you know great but i think people have lost the idea of actually supporting those artists that they love you know not realizing that you know even if it's that half a penny that half a penny adds up to a whole lot of you know being able to continue doing what you're doing you know at the end of the day i think that it's just evolving you know and i'm not sure that anyone knows quite how, where it's going to land or how it's going to work out but if somebody's streaming uh, you know, on Spotify and they can listen to anything, maybe they're going to get turned on to your music where they wouldn't have bought your record before. Now they're listening to you. Now they're a fan. Now they're coming to the show and dropping 25 bucks for a ticket, you know, and buying a t-shirt. And all of a sudden you converted somebody into a Fits and the Tantrums fan that wasn't one before. So it just kind of moves and shifts. It's hard to know where it's going. We're just all sort of, I think, on this crazy wild ride of, of the music business evolving all together, you know? To achieve everything we have, to have reached as many people as we have is, is pretty incredible. The thing about this business is though, is that you can never take your foot off the gas pedal for one second because here today, gone tomorrow, and we feel like we're just really starting to build up a real momentum so we don't ever want to take uh, take that for granted or stop doing it. I think I'm still a little touched and blown away uh, when people actually show up at the shows. I'm like wow people actually know us in uh, Portland, Maine or wherever we're going next. Uh, it's pretty incredible. It's uh, one of the most gratifying and humbling things that's ever happened to me.